Are you considering being tested for HIV? Are you wondering what your options are? If you can be tested for free and if you have to give your real name? Or have you received a test result and are now wondering how accurate it is? Welcome to the top 10 questions about HIV tests. My name is Dr. Becky Kuhn. I'm a physician who specializes in HIV AIDS. In this video, we will explain the different kinds of HIV tests that are commonly used today, how accurate they are, and how you can be tested quickly, easily, and at no charge. How do HIV tests work? HIV tests attempt to determine if you've been infected with HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. The most widely used tests look for antibodies to HIV in your body. To keep the risk of an incorrect result as low as possible, you will normally have to be tested twice, once with an initial ELISA test, then a second time with a Western blot if the ELISA's result was positive, before you are given a diagnosis of being HIV positive. On the other hand, to be certain that you are HIV negative, you will have to test HIV negative at least six months after your last possible exposure to HIV. What are the window period and false negatives? The two widely used tests we mentioned already, ELISA and Western blot, will only return a positive result after your body has created antibodies to HIV. That takes a while, as long as six months in some people. This is called the window period during which standard ELISA and Western blot tests may return a false negative result even though the person has actually been infected with HIV. This is why even if you get a negative test result, your doctor may tell you to come back in a few weeks or months to be tested again. PCR test for detection of HIV infection during the window period. There is another test that can be used during this window period. It's called the PCR test. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. It's a very sensitive test that looks for the presence of the virus itself in your blood, not the antibodies. PCR may be more expensive and doesn't give you an immediate result, so it's not generally used unless there's a particular reason to do so. The PCR test is very useful for diagnosing primary HIV infection. When people are initially infected with HIV, the virus multiplies very rapidly in the body because the immune system hasn't had the time to gear up a strong response and fight back yet. During this time, a person will have extremely high viral loads, up to two million copies of the virus per milliliter of blood, and they are by far the most infectious. In fact, it's estimated that up to a third of HIV transmissions via sex occur during the period of primary HIV infection. During this time, 40 to 90 percent of people infected with HIV will experience signs and symptoms of primary HIV infection, such as fever, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, fatigue, rash, and flu-like symptoms. Watch our video, Did I Just Contract HIV? Symptoms of Primary HIV Infection to learn more about how to recognize primary HIV infection. If you think you might have been exposed to HIV, it's important to get tested. If you think you're experiencing primary HIV infection, it's critical that you be tested for HIV right away. The PCR test can be used to determine that you're infected with HIV even before your body makes antibodies, and the ELISA and Western blot tests will return a positive result. So if you think you're experiencing primary HIV infection, go to your doctor. Tell them your risk factors, possible exposure to HIV, symptoms, and that you think you might be experiencing primary HIV infection. Ask whether the PCR test would be right for you. You may also request a referral to an HIV specialist or an infectious diseases physician, either of whom will be more familiar with the use of PCR. How long after exposure to HIV does it take for a person to test HIV positive? According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, on average, it takes 25 days for a person to develop antibodies to HIV that are detectable using the ELISA test. Most people will develop detectable antibodies within two 
to eight weeks. 97% of persons will develop antibodies in the first three months following the time of their infection. In very rare cases, it can take up to six months to develop antibodies to HIV. Using a PCR test, HIV infection can be detected within nine to 11 days after exposure to HIV. What's the risk of a false positive on the initial ELISA test? The ELISA test is quick, easy, inexpensive, and fairly accurate, although not perfect. According to Roger Chow, MD, and his co-authors in a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, quote, a large study of HIV testing in 752 U.S. laboratories reported a sensitivity of 99.7% and specificity of 98.5% for enzyme immunoassay, which is another name for the ELISA. That means two things. First, if a person is HIV positive, there is a 99.7% chance that the initial ELISA test will be sensitive enough to give a result of HIV positive as it should. Second, if a person gets an ELISA test result of HIV positive, there is a 98.5% chance that their test result is correct. What about the other 1.5%? If a person got an ELISA test result of HIV positive, but it is later established that they are not infected with HIV, we say that the ELISA test result was a false positive. False positive test results on the ELISA do occur. Pregnancy, recent influenza vaccination, and autoimmune diseases like lupus are some possible causes for a false positive ELISA test result. What's the risk of a false positive diagnosis after a Western blot test? If a person gets a result of HIV positive on the initial ELISA test, the doctor will perform a Western blot test to make sure that the first test wasn't a false positive. If the Western blot also returns a result of HIV positive, that person is given a confirmed diagnosis of being HIV positive. It is possible for an HIV positive result on the Western blot to be a false positive. However, this is extremely rare. According to Roger Chow, MD, and his co-authors in the 2005 review in the Annals of Internal Medicine, quote, with confirmatory Western blot, the chance of a false positive identification in a low prevalence setting is about one in 250,000. End quote. Dr. Chow's study showed that if a person gets a result of HIV positive on the initial ELISA test, followed by a result of HIV positive on the Western blot test, there's only one chance in 250,000 that the person's diagnosis of HIV positive is a false positive. In other words, if you get an HIV positive result on an initial ELISA, and the Western blot, there is a 99.9996% chance that you indeed are HIV positive. Videos and websites on the internet by HIV denialists, who are people who claim that HIV is not the cause of AIDS, often talk about false positive test results and exaggerate their frequency. They're usually talking about false positive results on the initial ELISA test, which may account for as many as 1.5% of the total HIV positive results on the initial ELISA. But a person is not given a diagnosis of being HIV positive until they've received an HIV positive test on the Western blot. If you have taken both an ELISA and a Western blot and your doctor tells you that you are HIV positive, believe them. The odds are overwhelmingly high at that point that you in fact are HIV positive. Can I be tested for free? Yes, just about anywhere in the world if you can get to a public health clinic or a sexually transmitted diseases testing center, you can be tested for HIV for free. Don't let the fact that you don't have health insurance or the inability to pay 
discourage you from getting tested for HIV. Can I be tested without revealing my name? Yes. If you want to be tested for HIV but don't want to reveal your name, there are several ways you can do this. Let's talk about each one. Anonymous testing. In some U.S. states, in some countries, you can go to a public health clinic and tell them you want to be tested for HIV anonymously. They will test you without recording your name. Confidential name-based testing. Not all U.S. states or countries have an anonymous testing program. Some U.S. states require that you provide a name when you're tested. They keep the name confidential and do not make it public. This is called confidential name-based testing. If you don't want to give your real name, you don't have to. Don't let confidential reporting requirements deter you from getting tested for HIV. Home-based testing for HIV-1. There are two major types of HIV. HIV-1 and HIV-2. HIV-1 is the predominant type of HIV outside of Africa. Another way to be tested for HIV-1 is to use a home-based HIV-1 test kit that you can buy at any pharmacy in the United States and other countries as well. You don't need a prescription to get the kit. You follow its instructions to get a sample of fluid from your gums. You mail your sample in and then you call a toll-free phone number to find out your results. No one knows your name and you get your results using an anonymous code number from your test kit. This approach is not free. You do have to pay for it. But it's anonymous and you can do it right in your own home. Do I have to be stuck with a needle? Not for the first test. The first test is usually done with a simple oral swab or a finger stick. If you test positive on the first test, you will need to give blood for the second test, which is a western blot. But you only have to give a little bit. If I test HIV positive, does that mean I'm going to develop AIDS and die? It doesn't have to mean that. People who are HIV positive can make wise choices that will improve their chances of living a long, healthy life, even if they are HIV positive. If a person gets tested for HIV, learns that they're positive, and follows their doctor's instructions, including the use of antiretroviral medications where appropriate, they may be able to prevent HIV from progressing to clinical AIDS for years, decades, or possibly for the rest of their life. See the video, Is HIV a Death Sentence? for more information about why being diagnosed with HIV doesn't necessarily mean a person will develop AIDS or die from AIDS. Why should I get tested? It's quick, easy, free, and your privacy is protected. If you're HIV negative, it'll keep you from worrying needlessly. If you're HIV positive, it can save your life and the life of your sexual partners or unborn child. Health experts recommend getting tested, and you'll be doing your part in the global fight against HIV. Need more reasons? Watch our video, The Top 10 Reasons to Take an HIV Test. Get tested. It's the right thing to do. This is Dr. Becky Kuhn.